All right, so here we are back to our code. So I created the prototype design pattern, as you can see here. Right click, new. This is going to be an interface. I'm going to call this a prototype. Okay. Come in, interface. And for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just uh, create a prototype constructor here. A prototype type called clone. Okay. Like that. All right. And next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to create a person class. New Java class. I'm going to call this person. Just a simple class. And of course, I'm going to go ahead and say private string name, private string age fact because it's age let's say int it's probably better and we just create a constructor here since we only have two of these that's totally fine we're constructing our object and the next thing I'm going to do is we are going to make this implement our prototype that way it knows how to create a type of itself okay of course we have to implement the methods there's the go. There we go. Now this is where we are going to actually do all the work because when this is called, it's going to copy the object and return a new object of that type. So in this case, because I'm creating a person, I'm going to say returns new person. I'm going just to pass the name and the age as such. Okay. That's it. So also because we created this person here, remember we are trying to create all these objects which we will be able to create clones of. Okay, so let's say if we want to create uh, a dolphin class here. That's an example, right? We can do the same thing, implements a prototype. In this case here, we have to go ahead and implement methods as such. And there we go. So for a dolphin, we can go ahead and say, give it a few instance variables, a private string name, private string age, as such. And we can go ahead and create a constructor as well to simplify things. There we go. And here, of course, we'll go ahead and return a new dolphin which we then have pass name and age. Okay, so now this hierarchy here is very important. So all of these classes are implementing our prototype, which of course has this prototype type called clone. So we could have changed this to make it more relevant to perhaps animal, right? Because we talked about animals, but let's just keep it as prototype. So what it does, it returns a clone uh, we have a method clone here, which is going to be of prototype type. Okay. Now to go ahead and see this in action is very simple. So because now what we can do is we can go ahead and create a few objects. Let's start with person object. Say I'm going to call this Bonnie, new person, and let's say her name is Bonnie. Age is forever twenty one. My wife is going to be happy. <laughs> okay, so now we have the object Bonnie. So I get this out and print person one, for instance. And I can say Bonnie. Okay. Now, this is just because to make it so that we are indeed in Java, let's just go ahead and do like that. Okay, so we have that. Now check this out. What we can do, we can create a person two or another person object. We're going to call here Nina <laughs> new. Instead of going to say new, because the idea here is that we can actually already create a clone of Bonnie because it's just a person already with all the uh, data that we want to make up a person, right? We can just go ahead and actually say person in this case, Bonnie, that clone, Nana is being cloned to Bonnie. In this case, we're just cloning Bonnie 
and create Nina off of Bonnie. But because uh, we need to make it so that it's actually person type, okay? Because the if you look back the prototype, it just returns a very generic prototype clone type, right? So we need to make sure that we're talking about a person because it could have been a dolphin, it could have been a dog, it could have been anything else. We have to cast it as we see here. Okay, so now if you go S out, say person two, in this case, I say Nina, you see that it's going to work. Now to finalize, to make sure that this actually works, let's go back to our prototype here. Actually, let's go to our person and create another to string method here. So what are we gonna return here for our to string is we're gonna just go to say this is person named pass in name such copy this and go to dolphin do the same to string like that okay of course we haven't done anything with dolphin so go back to main here because we did with the person object we created a copy let's do it with also the dolphin. Let's say dolphin. This is Jerry dolphin is equal to new dolphin. So we create dolphin. He's going to be called Jerry. Jerry is 78. I don't know if dolphins live that long, but it's okay. <laughs> All right. So let's say Jerry dolphin one. I'm just going to say is equal to Jerry as such. And then we're going to say dolphin again, Sam, good to know. No, we don't need to do that because we can just go ahead and copy Jerry and say clone. And of course, you have to pass here the type, which is this case is dolphin. Okay, this is the beauty of polymorphism here. All right, and I can say it's out. Dolphin 2, and we can pass Sam. Okay. If we go ahead and run this, we should see real quick. There we go. So this is person named Bonnie. Person 2, this is person named Bonnie also. Okay. But we know, of course, this is not Bonnie. This is indeed Nina. But since we copied, we cloned Bonnie, it assumes that this person is still Bonnie because it's 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 what we said, right? We're cloning, we're copying everything. And the same thing happens here. This person name is Jerry. Jerry. Now, if we wanted to see the differences here, we could have got back to our person class and perhaps uh, have getters and setters if we wanted to do. We're going to say something like this. All this, there we go, and go to Dolphin. As such, okay? And then in our main here, if we wanted to distinguish them in terms of changing their name, we can say Nina dot set name to Nina. Now if you save and run this, we should see that now second person name is Nina, right? But it still is indeed the copy of Bonnie. We didn't have to instantiate this Nina object here, right? Notice we said Bonnie.clone, and then we make sure that we want to return a person type. So this may seem small, but it's a huge deal because now we didn't have to create a new object per se. We just cloned what we already had, and we changed if we wanted to do so the and we went ahead and changed a few instance variables uh, or properties of this new object, in this case, Nina. Okay. Very cool, very cool, very cool indeed. Now, I want you to think of other uh, things you can do or situations where you think it would be a good idea to use the prototype design pattern in your work or uh, as an exercise, just think of a new situation. And once you're done with that, do the same thing that we did here. Okay, go through the process of actually creating the, the classes and, of course, the interface that will allow you to clone other instances of those classes.
just like what we did here. Okay, perfect. I'll see you next.